Okay, so in our last tutorial, we created a model of this, what I'm calling a pyramid bracket. Um, in this one, I'm gonna make a short video about how to make a simple drawing. Okay, now the things just to review that we talked about in the last video is that there is a part that assembles to the bottom of this from this direction down here, and there's a part that assembles from this side over here to the back of this. Okay, so that's important to keep in mind for when we dimension later on. Okay, so a couple things we're gonna do. First, we have um, right down here a couple different buttons, okay? Um, in order to create a drawing, we're gonna hit the plus sign here and we're gonna create a drawing. All right now, a couple important things to keep in mind. This is a metric um, drawing, so we're gonna hit all and it'll show all of these, all right? Um, these are just my recently opened ones. If you want to go into like the full on shape library, they have a ton of templates, ISO, ANSI, everything. We're going to make an ANSI drawing today. Um, and we're going to scroll down to the C size. I like to go with the C size for a part about this complex. You could always change it later on. Um, D I think would be too big. B and A are really only, only really exist for very, very simple pieces. Um, I think this part has enough features where we would want to go with the C size. So we're going to pick C size. And then it also gives you an option. You can have it create views or you can go no views. I like to go no views because I want to create what my primary view is going to be. I don't want too many views because um, not every part needs four views. So let's go ahead and hit OK here. Then it's going to go through and create the drawing. Now all of our drawings gonna load up and I'm gonna say, yes, I do wanna create this off of the pyramid bracket part. And before I actually place it, you can see it's previewing the front view. Do I, really, do I think that that's definitely the best primary view? Well, let's take a look at the part real quick. So here's our part, okay? And if we looked from the side, this would kind of look like an L, all right? That wouldn't be super descriptive. It's certainly more descriptive than like the top is. Um, if I look at the top, it would be a rectangle with a couple lines. It's not necessarily as descriptive. So definitely, I think the front would be the best primary view because it clearly shows that this is rounded at the top. There's slanted sides. There's another platform here. Um, so I do agree with the front view. But keep in mind, um, and I've talked about this in other videos, keep in mind that your front view isn't necessarily your best primary view. Okay, that's part of your job as a designer, as a draftsperson how to figure out what the most descriptive view is for um, your, your customer, for your manufacturer, whoever it might be. So I'm gonna click to place that front view. Now what um, it's gonna immediately try to do is to create my projection views. Now for me, I think the best projection view is gonna be this top view. If I went to the side, this thing's just gonna look like an L. I can't see any part or any other holes or anything like that. So I'm gonna go upward like this and I'm gonna to click to place that view. Once I have two views in place, it's gonna stop asking me if I wanna place any more views. And the reason being is a basic rule of drawing is that we should not have um, more than uh, or less than two views. So now the next thing I can do is I can come back up here and you can see here's my view sections right up here. So I have insert view, projection view, and auxiliary view. And then I have a couple other ones like create sections, broken out sections, all sorts of different things. Now I wanna create an isometric for up here. So I'm gonna pick insert view. I'm gonna switch my view orientation to ISO. And then I'm gonna come right up here and I'm just gonna click to place that. There it is. Now there's other settings I can change on this, but we'll get to that in a moment. Now the next thing you wanna do is you wanna bring out the sheets option because there's a lot of things you can customize up here, okay? So you can see what views you have, what views are dependent on each other by that outline there. I can also right click the sheet and I can go to properties and I can change, for example, the scale of my sheet. Now for me, I definitely want the scale to be different. They have a bunch of standard scales here um, and one thing I would recommend if you don't have a ton of drawing experience 
your scale usually wants to be some pretty round numbers, okay? Um, you don't want someone to scale off of your drawing, but at the same time, you don't want like 0.75 equals one or something like that, okay? Because that's just not a uh, something you can kind of wrap your head around if you have this printed out in front of you. Now for me, I think I need at least some bigger views here. So I could scroll down and select two to one. I think that's gonna be what I want. Or I can come right up here and I can delete the one and I can type a two and hit enter. And now everything's gonna scale up. Both do the exact same thing. My format is custom. I can change those things up here. My size of the format, my reference part, I could add more parts if I wanted to. Um, if that's what my uh, my drawing dictated. For this simple drawing, this is all I need. Okay, so I'm gonna hit the checkbox now. All right, and now maybe I need to move some views. So I'm gonna click on this one, you know, move this around a little bit. Move this one, whoop, don't wanna click them both at the same time. Move this one down. And one neat thing that on shape does do is if I move this view like way over here, for example, the projection views are gonna move with it once I place it. So I want this right down here. You know, it's an important part of orthographic projection. But I can also move, which I do like, is I can move projection views as well. And views that they depend on will move as well. So if I had a third view here and I move this one, the third view would move up and down in relation to this one. The top view would move left to right um, in relation to this one. Now I have my views in here. It knows what part I'm referencing. And now I can go down into my title block here. Now in my title block, there's a bunch of different options that are pre-loaded here. So it's gonna load my scale, it's gonna load my size. It's gonna load me, okay? It's gonna load the day that I'm creating this thing, okay? But there's a whole bunch of other stuff I can do as well. So if I zoom out, I can go zoom to sheet, all right? But I can also go to a couple other things. So if I right click real quick here, whoop, don't wanna click on view. If I right click, I can go to sheet properties. Sheet Properties is going to bring me to that same spot as before. If I hit OK, I can right click. I go to Drawing Properties. Now, this is certainly important because this is going to control a whole bunch of different um, sort of precision based things, preference based things. So I can adjust my units. My units are millimeters because I chose a metric format. I could adjust how my dimensions appear. I could adjust the font of my dimensions. I could adjust annotations and different parameters about those. Views, what type of projection I have. Now, we create third angle projection because we're designing in the US, but in some other countries, you use first angle projection. Okay, so maybe you want to switch to first angle. Um, if we move our way over, we have construction geometry. How is it going to indicate things? Center marks, how long are they going to be? How big are they going to be? What's the spacing? That sort of thing, okay? Um, then I can go to formats, different format properties here. And lastly, I could go to different table related things as well, okay? So there's a lot of customization that you have in here, okay? You can scroll through, there's all sorts of different things, okay? So once I'm done with that, um, there's other things that I can edit, okay? So I have my parts, I have my views, all of those sorts of things that I can edit um, for this title block down here. Or if I wanted to, I could actually just click, like double click in here, and I could change what it says. Or if I hover over them, it'll tell me what sort of reference there is. So like for example here, this says drawing part number. So what I'm gonna actually do first before we get too far into this is I add my students rename their drawing here. So this isn't gonna be drawing one. We're gonna rename this. And for this year's project that I'm teaching this, this one is MS1004-01. But in other years, it might be something different. That's just kind of our naming format. I can also right click here and go to properties, which are gonna bring up those drawing properties I referenced earlier. And I'm gonna show you a couple things um, that I don't think Onshape necessarily intended on doing, um, but I'll show you how to fix them um, just to, to make things consistent. So I can go by Onshape drawing, 
my part number is going to be MS1004-01, which is gonna pop up here for my drawing number. My revision, okay, is gonna be a dash. I actually agree with that. It's gonna be a release revision. Uh, my state is in progress right now because I haven't released it. In future videos, I'll talk about this. There's some really cool company management stuff where you can do versions and things like this or you can indicate to like, for example, like an approver, a checker, whoever it might be, um, what point you're at. So say like, I'm done with my initial drawing, I'm passing it on to the checker. Um, I can indicate that to the checker in different ways. Then I have title. So the title of mine is gonna be pyramid bracket. Um, I think I can fit all that on one line. So I'm not gonna put anything in here or anything in here. Drawn by me, drawn date. I can change that You know, I can pull up a calendar the day we're recording is this date right now. Um, it's not revision managed right now, but if I wanted to, I could actually have revision base. So now I could actually look at previous drawings if this drawing has changes. All right, so now I can hit apply and I'll see this populate and then I can close out of here. But you're gonna notice that in here, this didn't change, okay? And this is what I'm talking about. I don't think this is an on shape intentional thing. Um, I think that they, maybe accidentally, and let me just hit this wrench, make it go away. I think they maybe accidentally reference the sheet. You see it says sheet reference, whereas this says drawing reference, okay? Can this change from sheet to sheet? I've seen it on drawings. It's not really good practice necessarily, um, because even if you have like a tabulated drawing, for example, you typically on those other sheets, um, if you have those separate parts, on those other sheets, you're still calling it the overall assembly and then you're relating to a table, but um, I'm not gonna judge them based on what they thought. So I can just double click this thing, okay? And I can highlight these little dashes they've put in. And then I can go over here to this insert drawing property and I can pick drawing title one. And look at that pyramid bracket pops up and I'm gonna hit my checkbox. Now the next thing I'm gonna do, I don't need these other ones, so I'm gonna click this, I'm gonna hit delete. I'm gonna click this, I'm gonna hit delete. And now my title looks pretty good. I won't worry about the approved, I'm not having my students go through that right now, but I could add other things in here, weight, finish, material. I could also add, um, for example, like a standard tolerance block here, surface finishes, things like that. We're not gonna change any of that right now just because um, the point that we're at that I'm teaching this project um, to um, sophomores, it's, you know, that sort of stuff isn't necessarily stuff that we've talked about in detail. We've just touched on a little bit. So we won't worry about that for now. Now, the next thing I need to do um, is that I need to start dimensioning this thing. All right, so that somebody can make it. Now, there's a lot of things we need to consider when we dimension. Um, and you may see me move a view here or there as we go. That's just personal preference stuff. I like to keep like a nice spacing around here. Um, this is a little big right now, but that's okay. I'll leave it up there. Um, we'll see if it gets in the way later on. Um, but the first thing I want to do is I want to think about how we're going to make this thing. Okay, so first off, how are we going to make it? Well, we're going to make it um, by creating a full size block and then someone's going to cut this profile along here um, and then cut out this sort of L shaped section um, and cut out this platform across there. All right, so let's start with overall, we can move dimensions as we go. So one thing I don't love necessarily on, um, on shape right now is they don't have an option to show dimensions from the model, okay? And for future reference, if you're using other programs, say a Creo, say um, SolidWorks, NX, um, Inventor, go right down the line. I recommend showing dimensions from your part, okay? This gives you an extra level of checking to make sure that everything is dimensioned. It also lets you know if maybe a model wasn't made properly, that maybe you need to change something um, because the worst thing you could have happen is, you know, you, you pick up a model from someone, maybe you're the draftsman, you start going through it um, and you can't get something to work just right or maybe you're putting in the assembly and something doesn't fit just right um, or maybe it does fit right, but it's actually modeled wrong. Um, well, that could maybe indicate that maybe your design has a flaw somewhere. Um, but unfortunately, right now Onshape doesn't have that feature, but that's okay. Again, it's a free program. All right, so we're gonna hit 
dimension up here. I like to go with just the standard dimension, but you can see you can pick different types depending on what you need. So what I'm gonna do for my standard dimension is I'm gonna first put in my width. I'm gonna put as much as I can on the, um, on the primary view. So I'm gonna go from this side to this side. I'm gonna move down. And if I move towards the middle, it'll snap to the middle. I like to keep things centered if I can. I'm gonna click 96. All right, then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start thinking about the other parts of this. So we have depth. Depth I'm gonna show up here by clicking these two lines. Come out here, that's 36. And then really for this, I could dimension to the top height. I don't know if I wanna do that, but let's pick this arc. Let's come down here to this line. Let's come out here and it's going to give me a dimension to that center. Now I have a problem there, okay, because I don't necessarily want that to go right from the center. I'd rather go off of a center line. So let's actually hit escape. And then there's a couple things we need to do, okay? Again, this isn't necessarily a feature I love right now, um, but it does, this is a really great way to kind of learn how to properly make a drawing from scratch whereas some other programs can kind of hide a lack of experience, this one requires that you do have some experience. So we understand that if we're gonna dimension a round feature, we should probably dimension to the center unless there's a big reason we shouldn't. Um, so maybe, you know, for some reason you're dimensioning the length of something to a tangent edge, but that's kind of hard to verify. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and say, okay, we're gonna dimension to the center of this circle on this view. So I'm gonna pick the center point or the center mark. I'm gonna click the center and it's gonna now indicate the center there. The next thing I have to do um, is I need to come up here and pick this two point center line. Again, I don't love this, but it's okay. I'm gonna hover over the left side of the circle. I'm gonna click. I'm gonna come over to the right side. I'm gonna click. And that's gonna give me my horizontal center line. And I'm gonna go from the top to the bottom and that's gonna give me my vertical center line, which now is gonna allow me to go back to that dimension command. So I could hit D or I can go up and click it. And now I can actually pick this line, which is gonna give me a better extension here. So I can go from that line to that line. And you can see now it gives me a little break right there like it should. Come out here, click. Now I've placed that, but in, in concert with that, I also need to indicate the radius of this as well. Okay, so if I'm creating this part, all right, if we're creating the block, or if I needed to figure out how big of a piece I need to make this, 27 plus 17 would then tell me the minimum height I need my block to be, and 96 would tell me the minimum width, and then 36 would give me the minimum depth. All right, so now I've given all my overall dimensions. I've indicated how big this part is for the overall size. Now I can start worrying about my features. Now the first feature I have here is this hole in the center here. So let's indicate where that hole is. All right, so let's pick this vertical line and let's come over to this side. Let's come up this way, find the center here. That's 48. And then let's also indicate the diameter. I'm gonna pick this one. You can see, lucky for us, the people who made Onshape know what they're doing. And automatically is giving me a diameter because it's a full circle. Okay, and I'm just gonna pull that out. I'll arrange these things later. So now I've got that. I've got the center already because it's the same center that's shared with this. All right, and then I can go on to hit escape. And now I have the ability to click things and move them around. So one thing I do like to do is I like to line things up if I can. All right. Now with these sort of things, this kind of gets hidden if I do it that way. So maybe I want to drag this out and then I'm going to drag this out to equal that. And then I'll put this right inside here. Kind of like doing that. Um, just like that. That makes it pretty easy to read. And now I have kind of all my dimensions for my primary view there. And then for this one up here, if I wanted to, I could bring this out and line it up with that. But we'll, we'll do this at the end as well to make things look nice and clean. All right, so then the next thing I need to do is I need to indicate 
um, where this slot is. All right, so again, if I'm gonna draw this slot, okay, and I'm going to dimension to it, I need some center lines. And just, you know, a, a nice little uh, tip here is if you're not dimensioning to the center or dimensioning a round object in a view, don't put the center line in, okay? So for example, yeah, the slots down here, I could put a center line here, but don't put it there because you're not dimensioning the slot there. You're not trying to draw attention to the slot on this view, okay? A lot of people just get crazy. They put center lines everywhere. Like if I wasn't dimensioning these holes up here, I wouldn't put center lines there. Yes, they're round objects. Yes, the centers are there. But if I'm not dimensioning um, to them, then why would I indicate them and confuse my manufacturer a little bit more? The manufacturer is very, very smart. I'm sure they would figure it out. But I'd rather make it more obvious, hey, just focus on these features from this view. Okay, so let's start with this here. So let's go with a two-point center line again. So we'll go from this side to this side. You don't necessarily have to put that center mark I put before. I just wanted to show how to do it. And then for this one, it's going to be a little tricky. So this one automatically, it'll automatically extend outside of where you picked. This one, I'm going to have to go from here. And I'm going to have to kind of just come straight down here and sort of eyeball it and click. Ooh, it's not going to let me click. So I'm going to have to go to the center and click. And then I can hit escape, which will give me my little cursor. I can click this and then drag this down beyond the edge of the view, which is the right way to indicate that. So now I've indicated that slot there and I can now dimension to it. Okay, so I'm gonna say, I'm gonna go ahead and hit D and there's a couple things I wanna keep in mind. So for example, like I said to you earlier, um, when we made the part, there's a part that assembles from this side and a part that assembles from the bottom side, okay? That means everything in this view should be indicated from the bottom. Everything in this view should really be indicated from the back if I want this thing to line up or have the best chance of lining up. So I'm gonna pick this line and I'm gonna pick this line and I'm gonna come out here. All right, and it's gonna make things look a little bit messy, I know, um, but it is what it is. So I'm gonna say, Worst case scenario, if my dowel pin is all the way at this end towards the center of this, it's going to be 21 from this surface. Okay. Um, now I'm also noticing, by the way, that I did forget a dimension. Okay. So for example, this surface is a little bit lower here. I didn't indicate the height here. No big deal. I'll throw it in right now. So from here to here is 12. Click. All right, now I need to indicate where this is in relation to the center. Yes, I could just have them assume it's lined up with the center here, but I'm gonna make sure and really drive the point home that it's to the center. So I'm gonna go from here to the same surface side and put it right there. Or I could come all the way up here and put it in there. Let's try that. And I see one little issue when you move this to that point okay so I just click that drag the extension line up there so now I have a little break right there I think that works pretty good and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to indicate these holes here which are based off of this slot okay so there's a couple ways I could do it for where they are, I'm going to have to indicate across the middle because they're symmetric. For where they are um, vertically, I may want to dimension to the middle of this slot. I may want to dimension to the outside here. We're going to go to the outside just to be safe, but depending on how I design this part, if I had the full assembly, I may change the way I did it. Okay, so let's indicate these holes first. Let's put the center lines in from here to here and from here to here. And then the same over here, from here to here, from here to here. Okay, and actually I'm realizing now again, I forgot a dimension here. So you can see it's it's not always a linear thing. Um, sometimes we have to go through and sort of figure things out as we go. So I hit escape and then I'm gonna hit D 
And for this slot, I care about the width of it. So I'm gonna go from here to here, just like this. Okay. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to now indicate where these holes are. So first, let's put the size in. I'll show a really cool tool that they've added or that they have in here. Um, so we have, I didn't go through all the tools, so I'll go through each one here. We have our views, our broken planes, all that. We have our drop downs for different dimensions. We have some ordinate dimension options. And then we also have this whole call out tool. And then beyond all that, you have GD and T options, surface finishes, weld symbols, notes, call outs, all sorts of things. I love this whole call out thing because it's very, very accurate and it actually formats in the right way. So if you create your hole in the right way, the way that we did in the tutorial about the part, um, then what it'll actually do, as I'll show you in one moment here, is I can pick hole call out. I can go and click the center hole because that's the primary feature here. And check out that. It gives you the full hole call out with the counterbore in the right format um, according to ANSI standards. So that's excellent. Um, there's a lot of, of um, parametric modeling programs that don't do this properly. You have to kind of know how to do it yourself. So we'll go ahead and click. You can see it even used through and everything. I love it. All right, and actually, if you use it down here, you'll notice it'll add a through dimension too. So let's do that. We'll add that in, we'll hit escape. We'll pick this one. We'll delete it. I'm gonna move this guy back up. There we go. That's a lot better. So now the next thing we're gonna do, I could, could have put that on the end, by the way, but I, I kind of like that this does it this way. If you click in here, this one actually dictates it right off there, but I can add different things. So for example, we'll double click this one and I'm gonna put two X and then a space to indicate that this applies to two different holes. Okay, and then I can just click out in space here or I can go and select my next thing. So when I hit escape, there's my two X. And now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some more dimensions in. So I'll hit D and for this one, I'm gonna go from this line here to the center line here. That one's 36. We'll have to move that 14 after, as you can see. And you know what, let's dimension it a little different than the model. Let's make sure these are symmetric. So let's pick this to this, and then let's line these up perfectly. Okay. And then the last dimension I need is to the back surface. So I could either go here or I could go here. Let's go over here and make it a little obvious. Go from this to this, bring it out here. Boom, we'll hit escape. Now, the last thing I like to do is let's do some cleanup and let's also make sure that all of this makes sense. So I added the two X here. This applies to two as well. So let's go two X. The other thing I'm noticing now is all my dimensions are obviously over here. My whole callout's all the way over here. Let's get rid of this one. And let's actually put it over near the location dimension that we have here. So we'll take the whole callout again. We'll pick the inside one, bring it right out here. So now it's like all these are kind of all put together right near each other. Let escape. We'll double click on this again. 2X space, hit escape again. Okay, so now that's nice and defined there. All right, so let's walk through this thing and then we'll clean things up. I have my overall width. That probably doesn't have to be so far away. I have my overall height, which is a combination of that radius and that. And that probably doesn't have to be quite as far away from the view as it is. So we'll adjust these. So now it's just like minor cleanup, you know, make things that are easy to read. Make sure your dimensions are nice and spaced out. Your dimension rule of thumb is your dimension should be at least twice um, the dimension away. It shouldn't be like crowding right up against the view like this. 
Okay, you got all this space, use it. So I'll move that in, move this one in a little bit. Make sure they're nice and easy to read. We'll line this one up. So now I got my depth. Now let's look at the hole. The hole is this big. It's this far from the side, this tall, perfect. All right, now we'll come up here. The slot, it's this far from the side. This one's a little messy now, so I'm gonna just drag this out like this. Okay, and it's this far from the back, perfect. These holes, this far from the center, and this far from the back. Here's our hole call out, here's our width fantastic and then we're gonna add one more thing I like to do on slots just to drive the point home for um, a manufacturer I'm gonna hit note and we're gonna click on this arc here we're gonna bring it right out like this and we'll line it up after and what I like to do is type in full R full radius that tells them that this radius or this diameter of this circle is the equivalent of the full width of the slot. Okay, so now we'll hit escape. We'll drag that up, line it up. Do we have to do that? No. Does it make things look nicer? Definitely. Okay, you can see everything's nice and spread out, easy to read. So the last thing we have, or the last thing I'm gonna require for students to do on this project is to put some notes in. Okay, so we're going to go note, we're going to click right down here, and we're going to put two notes in. Okay, so first one is notes, colon, first note, one, period, space, okay. Dimensioning and tolerancing for ASME Y. 14.5-2009, okay? And I'm actually gonna try and put that all on one line, so I'm gonna drag this out. Okay, and that's just a standard um, tolerancing just to let someone know, like, okay, this is how you should interpret the dimensioning, um, because right now um, our students make drawings to ASME Y 14.5-2009 standard. And then for two, we're gonna say, unless otherwise specify, all dimensions are in millimeters. Almost spelled millimeters wrong. All right, and again, I can drag this out. I mean, if I, I don't necessarily have to, but I'll drag it out just to try and fit it all in one line. Perfect. So I'll hit okay. Then we'll hit escape. And we'll click this, drag it right down here. Boom. Okay, and then I'll right click, zoom to sheet, and there we have a nice simple drawing. Okay, and there's other things you could tweak, you know, you can move some views around, that sort of thing. Maybe you want your ISO down here. A lot of people like to do that. That's fine. Go to your personal preference, um, but Based on the information we've added, we have a full drawing um, that someone could accurately make this part now. Okay, so leave it down there. Look pretty nice. All right.